So the question is, are we alone in the universe? The, the first blush response to that is, well, it depends on what you mean by we. Okay, what do you mean by we? Well, we can begin by asking ourselves if we means life in this case. Do we have uh, other living things, biological entities outside of the Earth, elsewhere in our galaxy, in our universe? I would say the answer is probably yes, given the history of the universe. So you, wait, you, so you think we, the life forms on Earth, are the only life forms in the universe? Is that what you just said? Let me, let me go back. Okay. Say that I'd like to think that given all of the stars and planets and galaxies and so on that are out there, that we cannot be alone. We, as in life forms. You'd like to think. That means you wish that, but what about the evidence? Well, there is no evidence. There is no evidence for life outside of the Earth. Okay. People have presented some evidence. It has failed a number of tests, at least in the Martian example. Some evidence has even been presented that we've received radio signals from other stars. But the problem there, of course, is that it has yet to be duplicated. So as far as I know, there is no evidence that there is life outside of the Earth. However, my opinion is that given the vast scale of just our galaxy and the number of possibilities out there, I would, it seems um, eminently reasonable that there should be other life forms and that we are not alone. Would intelligence have evolved again. Human-like intelligence, that human -like can make telescopes and microscopes and so science. So intelligence that's technological in its expression. Yeah. Because one can imagine a water world with intelligent whale-like things singing to one another in complex harmony. And doesn't even uh, have to imagine. <laughs> and uh, yes, except our whale-like things called whales on this planet don't seem to have um, a tremendous amount of information content in their songs. Uh, analysis has shown this. Um, indeed, even if the songs are informative to whales and are maybe perhaps even entertaining to them, there doesn't seem to be many bits or bytes in there. But given that, a technological civilization, in my mind, requires that you harness chemical energy in the form of fire. You have to be able to smelt metals. You have to be able to build electrical circuits and finally construct micro mines called computers that help you solve problems and build more and more powerful telescopes and, okay, so and better and better instruments for communicating with you, one another. So would I, I, would say, I would say what gave rise to us if we were to stick with the bias of our, of our single sample and keeping in mind the genetic difference between Homo sapiens and say, pan you know, like bonobo chimpanzees, it's very, very small. It's something like less than one and a half percent that they, bonobos are interesting creatures, but they don't have much in the form of of uh, technology and culture. So I would say no. I would say that, that, that it goes back to this, this principle that I'm fond of these days, that in response to catastrophe, that the survivors or the surviving system gives rise to processes in many ways often more complicated than the progenitor. In the case of human history, the bottleneck in human population with climate change in Eastern Africa uh, within the, about 130 to 170,000 years ago reduced our population to critically low numbers. And this, um, this compels me to think that the survivors of that were able to then acquire new means for adjusting to an enormously variable range of environments from the, from the savanna to, to the subarctic, 
and in their migrations and in doing so they met uh, distant cousins in Homo erectus and Neanderthalensis and Florensis and others, uh, the Denisovans and whatnot for which we have almost no record, that those organisms, those pr proto-humans as it were, they physically evolved to their environment. They probably survived because they had a physical adaptation of having lived in subarctic environment, for instance, like the Neanderthals for several hundred thousand years. But what made Homo sapiens sapiens different, which I believe was in response to this bottleneck in the population in East Africa, but for which the mitochondrial Eve is evidence of. But bottlenecks would be, I would assume, on every planet there that has some life on it. And, all, and but the and difference here, are all there too. The difference here goes back to my chimpanzee example. Try to herd and see 200 chimpanzees in an airplane. Mm -hmm. People do it. People, humans just file on in. You read that by, in Sarah Hurdy's book. I and they cooperate with one another. Why should anyone care about astrobiology? because it's a new way of asking questions about ourselves that is purely within the scientific worldview. It doesn't require an invocation of a mythological worldview. Astrobiology is the study of life in the universe. And astrobiology's premise is that there is life elsewhere in the universe for us to to explore for and with hope discover.